All right, so uh, here we are coming up to the halfway point of the year. Now, history suggests the, the first half really, uh, you know, informs the second half. We've got strong momentum. Will it carry through for the rest of the year, Courtney? I, I'm very optimistic that it still can. I think as we continue to see the economy reopening and we're continuing to see some really positive earnings moving forward, I really think that's going to drive the economy. But more so than that, we still have so much cash on the sidelines. Americans have done a very good job of saving. There's about $2 trillion that are still sitting on the sidelines that Americans wouldn't have had otherwise had they not saved through the pandemic. And as they continue to spend and want to get out and do things and live their lives again, that's going to make its way back into the economy and continuing to drive this going forward. So I'm very optimistic we'll still see a positive second half of the year here. You know, banks, of course, are front and center today. After the close yesterday, they almost all, except City, hiked their dividends. Some even increased their buybacks. But what's intriguing about this is we also just saw the largest outflow from financials since March of last year. Courtney, you know, the old Wall Street saying, sell into this kind of news. I mean, are, is this sector a buy, sell, or hold? I'm definitely still a buy on the financials right now. Um, I think just some of seeing some of this positive news, like them increasing dividends and increasing their buybacks, and even some of the consolidation in the industry, I think we're going to continue to see moving forward. But also, even though we have had a, a kind of a lull here in interest rates have actually come down more than anything, I think longer term we'll likely continue to see some of these inflationary pressures kick in. Eventually, you're going to see that kick into interest rates, which actually is a very good thing for banks' bottom lines at the end of the day. So um, I, I think you want to be looking longer term with these banks, but definitely still a buy. All right. All right. Speaking of uh, interest rates, right, uh, and, and I kind of discussed this with Peter with the pri home prices, uh, and, and let's not also FHFA and we had Case Shiller also, which saw a huge surge. You know, this spike uh, right now because of home prices, it's amazing how many people are saying they will not buy a house. Now, people say one thing in a survey and they do something else, but I'll stick with you, Courtney. Considering this kind of a spike and just how much how expensive homes are, would it still be wise to be in that sector in the home buyers or anything else, home builders or anything else? I would definitely proceed with a little caution here. Um, there's definitely still, I think, short term, some pressure that can continue to increase prices, mainly the fact that demand is still there. So there's really a shortage in housing, especially with things like first time home buyers. It's estimated it would take anywhere from five and a half to six point eight million new homes just to meet the demand that's out there. But I think the question you really have to ask yourself is if prices keep increasing, and we talked about interest rates, if interest rates also go up, that really can drive some of those first-time homebuyers out of the market and continue to rent, because they do have another option of just renting in the meantime. Um, so some of that's already priced in, so I would definitely proceed with some caution there over the longer term. Uh, just to stick with our theme here, we talked about financials. Actually, I think that's a really good place to look right now, and just uh, stick with your guns there. Okay.